This is Dr. Holt. This video is on friction. Here I have a 10 kilogram object sitting on a surface. Um, it's, the surface is it's not going to move in the vertical direction or horizontal, but this object is free to move along the horizontal uh, plane. Um, here I have the coefficient of static friction being 0 0.40, the coefficient of kinetic friction being 0 0.30. Now these, var these values will vary depending on the type of material of the object, the type of material of the surface, as well as the surface finish between the two uh, objects. These values can be found in any handbook when you're looking uh, as far as the um, as far as sliding an object along a surface. Usually, it'll say like steel on steel, um, steel on aluminum, etc. You can look these values up. Here, I've defined these as 0 0.40, and the kinetic is 0 0.30. The thing to note is the first thing you should do first is always to make sure the object is even going to slide. Um, the maximum static friction is going to be the normal force times mu being the static. The kinetic is going to be constant. Um, it's not going to vary. So I have an object here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and first we're going to let this force just we're not even going to have this force exist. We're going to say right now that this force and when he push is equal to zero newtons first. So when I draw my force diagram or free body diagram of the 10 kilogram object, I'll do it right up here. Then I'd have 10 times 9.8. That's going to give me 98 newtons coming down. I got 98 newtons coming up. So force gravity is going to equal to 98 newtons coming down here normal force here will also be equal to 98 newtons. Now here if I push zero we go ahead and we use this equation here again the maximum that friction can be, and we'll go ahead and run those numbers would be equal to 98 times 0 0.40 we run that number real quick and we'll see what we get 98 times 0.4 gives me a value of 39.2 newtons. Now that's the largest value that the uh, static friction can be. So here, even though this value says 39.2, my frictional force here would be zero. And we could draw those two components. I mean, it's meaningless, but we're going to show you anyway. Um, we could draw those, but they're both going to be zero. Zero newtons. And then friction here is always going to resist the direction it's trying to be moved. That's also equal to zero newtons. Now if I change this value, let's change this, and I'll put in a force of 10 newtons. If I do that, make that 10 newtons, I come over here. All I have to do now, let me change that eraser too. I'll have to do that, make that 10 newtons here. Friction will immediately become 10 newtons. And again, when I sum my forces in the horizontal direction, I'll get 10 newtons minus my frictional force is equal to mass times acceleration here. And I'll find out very quickly that acceleration is going to equal to zero. The object's still not going to move. So I change it again. We go up to 20 newtons. If I make it 20 newtons here, Frictional force will immediately change to 20 newtons. Run the numbers again. And basically I get the same thing. I get 20 newtons minus 20 newtons. Make that in a little bit better than that. And again, I get acceleration equal to zero. Now, if I change it to 40 newtons, then the maximum static friction can be 39.2 newtons. So if I make this 39.2 newtons, I have 40 newtons here, minus 39.2 newtons, this object's immediately going to accelerate. However, you cannot just set that equal to the mass of the object and calculate acceleration that way. Because once you once the object starts to move, the kinetic friction will take over. And we'll find out what that value is going to be. So we take 98, we multiply that by 0.30, and we do that. 
98 times 0.3 gives me a value of 29.4. So when you find your acceleration, you're not going to use the static. You're going to use the uh, kinetic when it's sliding along, and we put in 29.4 here. So now if I take 40 minus 29.4, I will get 10.6. So on this side here, I will get 10.6 newtons, and I'll change this to uh, equals to 10a. We divide by uh, 10. I should put vector quantities on there. And when I do that, 10.6 divided by 10, the object will immediately start to accelerate 1.06 meters per second squared to the right. All right, now let's just back up a little bit. We had 29.4. I want you to note here, even though I changed this value to 30 newtons, for example, and where this value becomes larger than the kinetic friction, the object still will not move because static friction will immediately change itself to 30 newtons. So the way the static friction works, it will vary between zero and the maximum value that it can to prevent the object from, from moving. Once you exceed the static friction, the kinetic friction will take over and you, you will find all your accelerations based upon the kinetic friction. All right, and from this you can use all your kinematic equations to find out, um, you know, what what the uh, velocity is going to be at any certain point in time, how far the object will travel at a certain uh, value of t, etc. All right, let's look at one more. This is a little harder. Here I have an object on an inclined plane. I'll go ahead and define an angle here. Let's make this 20 degrees here. Okay, if you're given a problem like this, the th first thing I'm going to recommend is to go ahead and break this into components. So the first thing I like to do is I come down here. I take 10 times my 9.8. That'll give me 98 newtons coming down. I break that into a component that's going to go this way here and one that's going to come back this way here. I will have a right angle here. If this angle is 20 degrees, this angle here will immediately become 20 degrees here. This value right here will become 98 times the cosine of 20. This value here will become 98 times the sine of 20. Run those values real quick. That will give me 92 here. 92.09 newtons going down. 98 times the sine of 20 gives me 33.52 newtons. Okay, when we draw our free body diagram, and I'll do it right up here, in the, and then we're going to let this direction here be x. Anything that goes this way will be positive. We will set up anything that goes this way up this way will be y. And again, anything goes up will be positive. Now, since this object's not going to accelerate this way, we know if we sum our forces in the y direction, we have to equal to zero. So, move this little dot over and do my free body force diagram or free body diagram here. I will come down here. This will become my 92.09. Newtons here. My force normal will go back up. That's the surface pushing back up. That will give me 92.09 newtons here. I'll immediately add this one here, which is our... Check that value again. That just seems low. Oh, sorry. I Yeah, let me rewrite that. I messed it up. Sorry. That was supposed to be 33.52. I think I said that, but didn't write that. Okay, so now we'll have 33.52 coming down this way here. Now, right now, I'll let this be zero. Okay, now, again, by definition, you find out what your maximum static friction is going to be. It'll be normal times my mu here. So I take 92.09. We'll multiply that by 0.40. 
So 92.09 times 0.4. Do that again. 92.09 times 0.4 gives me a value of 36.84. Okay, that's my max. Okay, that's my maximum friction. So if this is 33.2, my static will immediately pull back up and say 33.52 here. Okay, now let's, let's change this value here. Let's say I'm going to push up 10 newtons here. Okay, if I'm going to push up 10 newtons here, this is interesting. This is actually going to be very interesting for you because if I push back up 10 newtons here, Now, if <clears throat> if I push 10 newtons, uh, friction is going to resist that motion, but I got 33.52 going down. So what friction is going to do? It's going to reduce itself in this case because I'm going to sum the forces in the x direction and set them equal to zero. I'll get minus 33.52 plus my 10. Let me move that down. Actually, do that over again. I'm going to do it right here. Sum my forces in the x. I will get minus 33.52 plus 10 plus my frictional force. In this case, is going to equal to zero. So 33.52. Make that negative. That's going to give me a frictional force. Is going to change it to 23.52. So my frictional force in this case it will change back to 23.52 because that object is not going to move. Oops, sorry, 23.52. Okay. So now let's run and let's figure out what's even required to move this object. Okay, to move that object, once I start increasing this load here, if I make this load become large as, as I possibly can, what's going to happen as I increase it is that this friction force is going to reverse itself. Instead of going this direction, frictional force is going to is going to turn on it because it resists motion. And it's going to go back this way, move us down. Get it exactly parallel. I go back here, my maximum is 36.84. Change this to 10 Newton, or get rid of this value right now. So now, <clears throat> For me to even move that object, this vector here has got to reach the sum of those. So 33.52 plus 36.84 gives me 70.36. It's going to require a force of 70.36 or greater newtons to even get this object to move up this incline. Once that force becomes greater than 70.36, let's say we do 71 newtons. Since 71 is greater than the sum of these, this object will start to move immediately. At that point, your kinetic friction kicks in, your static will go away. That becomes not my normal force times 0.3. Oh, so 92.09 times 0.3 gives me a value of 27.63 newtons. So this value immediately will change back to the kinetic friction and that becomes 27.63 newtons. And now if I sum the forces in the x direction, I will get minus 33.52 minus 27.63 plus 
0.36 is equal to the mass of the object times acceleration. We will take those values, add them together. And that object will accelerate at a value of 0.9213 meters per second squared. Make that a vector quantity going up this direction here. And that's the that's way that's going to work. Even though this, is, this value is 27.63, I have to exceed my maximum static friction before this object will even start to move. Okay? Two problems. Um, this one's a little bit more complicated than the first one. But again, just follow my techniques and um, you, you will get the right acceleration.